hatred. If you're watching this review, then I'd be surprised if you haven't at least heard of this game. But in case you haven't, this little shooter set off quite the controversy when its trailer hit YouTube a little while back, because of its pretty graphic depiction of the brutal slaughtering of civilians by a complete nutcase. Some people were horrified. Some people, like me, saw it as being no different to all the other games out there that let you just slaughter people on a whim for fun. And it also set off quite a debate about whether or not video game violence has gone too far. So, after all that, how's the game itself turned out? Not great, I'm afraid. In fact, it's pretty shit. It's basically a lazy rehash of the original Postal, and let's be honest, the original Postal wasn't that great to start with. The story of Hatred revolves around this chap, an unnamed man who at the start of the game tells us that he's basically had enough of the world for some reason he doesn't go into, and wants to go out in a blaze of bloody glory whilst taking as many people with him as possible, at which point we then follow him out onto the street and begin the bloodbath. Fair enough? I'm not going to talk about the story for too long because there's not much here, but suffice it to say that the story, which is told by cutscenes between bouts of mass slaughter of civilians, is not deep, nor indeed is it very good by any stretch of the imagination. The writing is very poor, and I even get the impression that the developers didn't seem able to decide if they want you to take the game seriously or not, because at the beginning, you get the impression that it sounds like it wants you to take it very seriously, but by the end, it's so over the top and just silly, though not in a funny way, that they couldn't possibly expect you to take it seriously at all. To top off this rather poor story, your character is pretty much the single most unlikable game character this year. Not because he's a mass murderer, no that's fine, but because he's seriously annoying. He's so badly written that he comes across as a whiny kid with an attitude problem rather than a psychopath, who is simultaneously trying to be every badly written RPG villain ever devised, yes RPG villains, as he randomly talks about things such as being the embodiment of hatred and disgust, and that he's here to cleanse the world, and other such things that he spouts as you go around killing people, and he'll do this very often. By the end of the first level, he'd gotten right on my tits. So, not a good start. But it's an isometric shooter. It would be nice if it had a great story and a main character, but it doesn't have to to be fun. So, a bad story, not really important. The important thing here is gameplay. Unfortunately, the news isn't really very good here either. When I started playing, I was actually quite encouraged from the looks of the first level, because everything that you would expect from an isometric arcade shooter seems to be here. For a start, the controls aren't bad. Whether you're using a gamepad or a keyboard and mouse, I found the controls to be pretty reasonable. I'm going to concentrate on the mouse and keyboard since that's the setup I prefer. The mouse allows you to aim around and the left mouse button fires your weapons, whilst you use the keyboard's AWSD keys to move around in any given direction and the first four number buttons select one of the three weapons that you can carry at any one time, and toggle a selection of free grenades. It is a bit easy to get stuck on objects in your environment, but other than that, no real complaints. Your main objective in the first level is pretty simple. You're given a number of people you have to kill, and, well, you have to go out and kill innocent people whilst fighting off the cops, who come to try and stop you, and even the occasional civilian who picks up a gun and tries to do a John Wayne on you as well as some side objectives scattered around the rather impressively sized level. Oh, and you'll discover that the levels are very destructible, which is always a good thing. Unfortunately, when you get to the second level, you'll realise that in level 1, you saw almost literally all this game has to offer. In most of the levels, your objective is exactly the same. Kill a set number of people, whilst fighting off the cops, SWAT and the army, who are pretty much exactly the same by the way, except each one is a bit harder to kill than the previous, and at the end, you'll probably have to fight off a huge horde of the same enemies you've already killed in droves. And it just repeats this in almost every single level. It changes in the last two levels, where they suddenly thought, bloody hell, maybe we should actually try and put some variety in this game. Uh, when in level 6 you have to go and collect some explosive, and in level 7 plant it somewhere to blow up a nuclear power station, but it still basically manages to play out the same. Oh, and those secondary objectives I mentioned, they're mostly just the main objective. Kill a bunch of people, but do it in a particular spot, for which you are awarded respawns. 
A lot of the time, I didn't even have to kill anyone in those secondary objectives to get them. I just fired a few shots in the air and people ran off. I was then awarded the respawn. Now they do make an attempt to jazz up the side objectives a little now and then by actually giving you a different secondary objective, shock horror, but they are always painfully simple. Like flick this switch and watch as a train comes along and crashes and blows up your sodding vehicle whilst it's at it. Or break into a bank and set fire to the money, which kind of feels like a really crap attempt at making a comment on capitalism. You won't find yourself going out of your way to accomplish these objectives because they feel worth the time or fun. You'll just be doing it because you need to get the respawns they give you. They do make a little bit of an attempt to add some variety by putting in the odd vehicle you can drive around here and there, but there's no reason why you would want to use them because they control like shit and only a few of them that I found actually have guns. It's much easier just to walk. Now, all this simplicity wouldn't be so bad. There's nothing wrong with a simple shooter, but there are more things that bring the game down aside from a lack of variety. The big problem I have is this game's difficulty. Hatred is quite a difficult game, and if you've watched any of my previous reviews, you'll know that I love hard games. But this one is hard for all the wrong reasons. It's a challenge primarily because of the sheer quantity of enemies it throws at you. It will throw bucket loads of them at you, and it becomes pretty obvious early on why the game throws so many at you. It's because the enemy AI is absolutely pathetic. I don't mean pathetic as in simple, by the way. I mean broken. The AI is busted. For one thing, it is pretty stupid. Not once have I seen the enemy try to flank my position, throw stun grenades through a doorway before charging in, though we have seen them throw them at me in the open where I can easily avoid them or even use cover. All they do if you're outside is just charge straight towards you and then just stand there out in the open as you easily gun them down. Or if you're inside, they'll walk single file through a doorway that you're stood behind, allowing you to shotgun them to death one after another after another. They will even happily walk through fire. And that's if the AI can actually manage to do any of that in the first place, by the way. At multiple points, I found myself standing in a room waiting for them to come in single file but found myself stood there watching a bunch of them just milling around outside, as if the AI couldn't figure out what to do with them until I got bored and chucked in a grenade to make them move. Compounding issues yet still further is the curious decision to make everything black and white. I suppose this was probably done to convey a dark and edgy atmosphere, but all it really does is just cause problems for you, because your enemies are also in black and white, and it can often be difficult to distinguish your target from the background, especially in darker areas which isn't too welcome when you're being shot at by about 10 or 20 enemies. You can hold down the ALT key to highlight targets in red, but when you're in the middle of a gunfight holding down that button is a little bit awkward especially since it brings up your objectives as well, and you shouldn't have to do that anyway. As if all this wasn't bad enough, you'll often find that you're being fired up from off screen. Now, if you hold down the right mouse button, you can aim, which allows you to see further than you normally could and take out the uh, offending enemy. Unfortunately, at the time of writing, they didn't seem to think it was a good idea to provide some way of indicating which direction you're being shot at from. And because of the black and white graphics, you can hardly see bullets coming towards you, so you can't use that. You can use the radar in the corner to tell you which way to aim, but this means that you have to take your attention away from the main screen to look at the radar which is of course not ideal when you're trying to dodge fire. That's why most games give you an indication of where shots are coming from in the first place. And even when you have established which way to aim, you have to pick them out from the environment that they're blended into. And on top of that, whilst you're aiming, you can barely move, which is a bit of a problem because although the AI is rather stupid, it's very good with its aim. So if you're not able to move around, you're gonna get hit. All told, by the time you manage to take aim at your target and get a few shots off, you'll probably have lost half your health anyway, so running like hell is probably a better option when you get shot at. The result of all this is that although I was fairly amused by the game for a little bit, by the end of level 2, which is only about half an hour's worth I think, the experience just wore real thin, and by level 5, I'd just had enough. Had it not been for the fact that I said I'd do a review, I would have stopped right there and never touched it again. It's also a very short game, only 7 levels, and thank fuck for that. So, not a great deal of fun from a gameplay standpoint, 
I can't help but feel that the developers were re kind of relying on the game's shock value with its brutal slaughtering of civilians, but unfortunately, perhaps the worst thing about Hatred is that it's not really all that shocking. In fact, I'd go as far as saying that by today's standards, it's really tame. In the post-postal era of gaming, we're quite used to seeing so-called shocking content in video games, so in order to really shock us, you have to really go for it. Unfortunately, destructive creations don't seem to have noticed this. Yeah, you shoot loads of civilians dead, but it doesn't really feel very disturbing, or even fun. You shoot them, or kick them, they fall down and plead for mercy, and you're going to hear those same pleas for mercy again and again and again, by the way, and you just keep doing that. But what about the executions? Nope. Boring. In the last decade or two, certain games have set the bar pretty high for brutal and sometimes shocking executions, but again, no one seems to have told the developers of hatred this. Just like the gameplay, they get off to a good start in level 1. You know, you go up to a person who isn't dead yet, press the execute button, and you'll be treated to a little animation of him stabbing them in the head, or slitting their throat, stamping their head into mush, that sort of thing, and it does leave you thinking, okay, not a bad start. I wonder what sick shit he'll do to them later. Unfortunately, just like the gameplay, by the end of level 1, you've seen everything that there is to offer. The executions don't get any more inventive, and like everything else, they become tedious and boring, to the point that the only reason you're bothered doing them is because executing people restores your health. That's the only reason you'll do it. Now we just have presentation to go through, and it's a bit of a mixed bag. I suppose it's actually quite a good looking game, Everything looks quite detailed, and everyone animates nicely and all that good stuff. Unfortunately, it's quite difficult to see all this detail, because someone made the very odd decision to make everything black and white, and various shades of grey. Aside from things like neon signs and red explosives scattered around the level. I've already gone into the gameplay difficulties that this causes, and granted, it does make for some pretty damned impressive explosions which stand out all the more against the black and the grey but I can't quite figure out what the point was. Was it supposed to create a dark, brooding atmosphere? Because it doesn't work. If you want to make such an atmosphere, you need to make more effort than literally turning everything dark. All it does is rob the player of what might otherwise be a pretty looking game. Now as for music and sound, there almost is no music, it's just a sort of, I suppose an ambient noise in the background. Fuck knows what it's meant to do, I guess it's just another lazy attempt to create atmosphere, but it falls flat on its ass. The sound effects are quite good though. Nothing special, but they do the job. Oh, and a quick note about performance. Uh, this game is pretty badly optimised. Now, my system isn't exactly shit hot, but it should be able to run this at max, at least I think it should. I at the very least get the feeling it shouldn't be struggling to get this game past 40 frames per second without bandicam running. And if you're an ATI or AMD user, you might well have a nasty number of bugs to deal with. I haven't got an ATI or AMD setup, so I can't really report on this. And they have been patching for these performance problems, but only time will tell if they've sorted them. Right, to conclude, as I said at the beginning, Hatred is basically a lazy rehash of the original Postal. With its poor story, annoying main character, copy and paste gameplay, lack of any attempt to add variety, piss poor and frankly broken AI, poor optimization, and total lack of the promised shock value, Hatred deserves neither the hype nor the controversy that surrounds it. For £15, you can buy so many better shooters. I just hope that the money and time that I wasted reviewing this game prevents others from doing the same. Avoid at all costs.